16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig. How do you choose the right unified memory for your new MacBook Pro? Welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. And also welcome to the brand new studio. This is the first video I've ever shot from the studio. Apologies about the sound quality. It's still a bit echoey in here. I'm working on it, don't worry. So today, the most successful piece of content I've made for this channel is all about how to choose between the eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte M1 chip. To this day, both this channel and my website get no end of views, hits, and comments about that buying conundrum. Clearly, Apple hasn't made it easy for people to choose between the different unified memory options. Which brings us on to the next conundrum. How on earth do you choose between the M1 Pro and M1 Max when it comes to 16, 32, or 64 gig of unified memory? Memory. My first piece of advice, however, is to start with the chip itself. You've got to choose between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The good news, I've made a video about that already, which I'll link to above. So if you haven't watched that yet, go and watch it and then come back here. If you have watched it already or you have watched it just now and you've come back, let's get into what type of user each of the memory options is for. Now, the 16 gig version is only available on the M1 Pro. So if the M1 Max just feels too expensive and just too powerful for what you need it for, then the next decision you've got to make is between 16 and 32 gig of unified memory. Now there's a $400, 400 UK pounds difference between the two, so it's a significant purchasing decision. And as you'd expect, Apple do their best to try and make you upgrade. So for example, if we look at their website, they say the more memory your MacBook Pro has, the more apps you can run simultaneously and the better they will perform. That sounds amazing, Apple, but how does it translate to real world usage? A case in point, I've edited, I think about 80 of the videos on this channel on the 16 gig M1 Mac Mini. And I never feel like I'm pushing it in terms of that unified memory. I think I push it a little bit in terms of graphics, that's for another video. But when it comes to that 16 gig, it performs amazingly. I just don't feel like I'm maxing out the unified memory at any point in time. Also, I did a recent benchmark, I know, check me out, on the 14 inch version of the new MacBook Pro, and that was the base level version, which meant it had that 16 gig of unified memory. Now compared to the 16 gig Mac Mini, it halved my rendering time in Final Cut Pro, and it took three minutes off the export time. Those are huge gains for a video editor like me. I know that's only one use case, I know people are using these for all sorts of different things like music production and development and all sorts of things. But from a video editor's perspective, the 16 gig is absolutely plenty. In fact, I could stick with that base level 14 inch if I wanted to. I'm not, I am waiting for a 16 inch maxed out version to arrive. But if your use case is similar to mine and you don't really push things in terms of working with really big files, I would save you money and just go for the 16 gig M1 Pro. The sheer performance of that M1 Pro alone will absolutely sail you through every single task. But if you think you need more, keep watching. So who is the 32 gig version for? And bearing in mind, the 32 gig of unified memory can be added to both the M1 Pro and it's where the M1 Max starts. And this is quite simple. If you work with really big files, then 32 gig probably makes sense. And a great example of big files is music producers. So if you work with things like Logic Pro or Ableton, you might have very big sample libraries that you work from. So there's lots of big files being loaded into memory that you need to access very quickly. Now 16 gig, you're probably gonna hit that limit fairly quickly. But with 32, it gives you much more headroom. And you will know far better than me how big the files are that you work with. And if you know that 16 gig in the past has been troublesome for you, then even though we are in a different realm now with with unified memory with these new M1 chips and M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, again, it still makes sense to up the memory as much as you can afford. And if that $400 slash 400 pounds upgrade to the 32 gig of unified memory feels like you'd get a decent return in terms of productivity and not having to wait around for things to work, then it's a bit of a no-brainer, particularly if you're running a business. It should also future-proof your investment more than that 16 gig version. However, if you still think 32 gig isn't quite enough and you're fascinated by that 64 gig version, keep watching. Now for my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is arriving fingers crossed later this week, I stopped at 32 gig. For me as a video editor, what was far more important were those graphics cores. So that's where I spent my money. And I spent a bit more money as well on the two terabytes of storage. For me, that just made sense. I didn't need to go beyond 32 gigs of unified memory. Now it's important to note that you can only add 64 gig to the M1 Max chip. The M1 Pro goes as far as 32 gig and stops. And that means that at this stage, if you've already gone that far, you're spending a boatload of cash already on a laptop. So adding another $400, 400 pounds onto that purchase price 
it's going into stratospherically expensive territory. So if your palms are now suddenly starting to sweat and you're starting to think, what am I doing? Go back to that 32 gig version and just go with that. But if you work with colossally big files, so massive sample libraries, huge 3D projects, visualization, virtualization, things that I've, I do not know what they are, stuff where you need the absolute maximum amount of memory possible, the 64 gig, could be for you. This all comes down to peace of mind. I think beyond 32 gig, we're into the realms of serious computing power and you might need it, but equally, you might just be the sort of person with a pretty good budget who just wants to know that you've got as much headroom as possible and also that you've got ultimate resale value. You'll get that from the 64 gig of unified memory. And also if you like doing benchmarks and just demonstrating how powerful your computer is, nothing wrong with that at all, then again, it's a good option to go for. Equally, if you want that warm, fuzzy feeling of having the absolute maxed out most powerful MacBook Pro on the market, then you have to go with the 64 gig. Now, all of these new MacBook Pro configurations will last a long time and have great resale value. That's always been the case with MacBooks, but there's no doubting that a spec'd out 64 gig model is probably gonna A, last you an awfully lot longer, and B, be worth a decent amount of money once you finish with it. Now, I hope this has helped. It's been quite a simple guide. I appreciate that, but it's not really worth getting into the weeds with this stuff. You can get really lost in benchmarks. Truth of the matter is that the M1 Pro and the M1 Max are super powerful chips. We're into a completely new world when it comes to Mac performance. And I have only played with the 16 gig version so far. As mentioned earlier, I'm waiting for a 32 gig 16 inch MacBook Pro to arrive. It's coming later this week. I will then do some tests between that and the 16 gig and you know me, they won't be detailed benchmarks. It will be real world performance. But it is worth putting things in perspective. I've been using the M1 chips for the last year and my eight gigabyte M1 MacBook Air and the eight gigabyte M1 24 inch iMac feel like they've got 16 gig of RAM. Sorry, unified memory. Got all the way through this video calling it that. And, and like I mentioned earlier, that 16 gig M1 Mac mini feels like it's got far more than 16 gig. So can you imagine what 32 gig and 64 gig is gonna feel like in an M1 Pro or M1 Max? It really is an exciting time to be a Mac user, but equally there's never been a better time to save your pennies and put them elsewhere other than the memory. So if you think 16 gig is gonna work for you, go for it. You won't be disappointed, trust me. But I'd love to know what you're going for, either based on my advice or the decision you've made already. Are you gonna go for the 16 gig, the 32 gig, or the 64 gig MacBook Pro? And why? Get involved in the comments. If you'd like to see more of the 16 gig M1 Pro in action, keep watching for a link at the end of this video to my full review of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But until next time, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you next time.